Good morning, Facebook. I am getting going on Instagram here, and we will get rolling. Give me one second, Facebook. Okay, we are live on Instagram. Good morning, fellow ice people, ice friends. Excited to be here this morning with you all. PT on Ice, it's February 1st. We are in a new month of the year and uh, really excited to be here to talk to you this morning. My name is Alexis Morgan. I am one of two faculty for the fitness athlete, pregnancy, and postpartum. We um, are in our cohort right now, this first cohort of the year, we've already got several sold out for the next cohort, which begins on the first week of March. So if you're on the fence, jump in. We are having an absolute blast with this course. So um, you can find information about that on our website, ptonice.com. And not only about our course for the pregnancy and postpartum, but for all of our ICE courses, you can find all the information, live courses and online on that website. So I am going to jump right into our topic today. So for those of you who know me or who have worked out with me, you know that I hammer good technique, um, both personally uh, in my own athletic journey and with my clients and it was actually during the clinical management of the fitness athlete um, the essential foundations online where I realized oh my gosh I can't do any of these movements correctly and I had been doing for CrossFit for quite a while at that point so um, at that time I realized I've got a lot of work to do and since then a lot of work has been done in um, in trying to improve my technique and it's still a work in progress um, but I wanted to share with you all something that I have learned in this journey of improving technique and this is something that I've used personally and then it's also something that I use a lot with my postpartum athletes. So here's where we come in with the tale of two wolves. So if you're not familiar with this old legend, I'm going to quickly share with you the story. So an old Cherokee is teaching his grandson about life. And he says, a fight is going on inside me. It's a terrible fight, and it's between two wolves. One is evil. He is anger, envy, arrogance, guilt, lies, ego. The other, he continues, is good, is joy and peace, love, hope, humility, kindness. The same fight is going on inside of you and inside of every person. And the grandson thinks about it for a minute, and then he asks his grandfather, which wolf will win? And the old Cherokee simply replies with, the one you feed. So what does this have to do with technique? It has everything to do with it. Every single rep you complete in the gym is food for one of two wolves good technique or bad technique. So the question is which one will you feed? So let's go through two different patient scenarios and see how this plays out. Patient A, she comes to me with shoulder pain, nine months postpartum. Her goal is to return to pain-free pull-ups. 
So we do the assessment, and as it turns out, for the last six to eight months, she's been doing kipping pull-ups in this postpartum time. However, in this initial assessment, we recognize no ability to hold a hollow position, not even modified hollow position, for more than 10 seconds. Really, really um, weak and poor endurance in the core. That's expected, right, with postpartum. Um, not so with someone who's doing kipping pull-ups. We assess her ability to actively hang from the rig on the bar. No, no ability. We're, we get her feet supported, still struggling to find that good, solid position. Then, when I assess her ability to functionally transfer her load across her abdominal wall, a lot of difficulty. Um, we saw some doming and coning in the core and really had no strategies to improve that positioning. So as you can imagine, with these foundational weaknesses at her core, her kipping pull-ups over the last six to eight months have been pretty poor. They've been, she's been feeding the wrong wolf, the bad technique wolf. And the more she fed that wolf, the stronger it became. Simultaneously, the weaker and the more feeble that good technique became, that good wolf got really, really weak all through this time. So what did care look like for her? It looks like two things. Starve the bad wolf, feed the good wolf. So for her, starving that bad wolf, I said, look, no more of these kipping pull-ups. They're not, you don't have a solid foundation. We're, we're feeding the wrong wolf. Stop feeding that one. No more of these kipping pull-ups. And instead, we're going to feed the good wolf. We're going, we've got, we've got some nurturing to do. This little wolf is weak. So we have got to do some leg-assisted hollow work, some band work. We've got to do some modified hollow position on the floor, knees tucked all the way in. We're not putting our arms overhead yet. We're not there yet. Arms are staying down, reaching towards the heels. That's this nurturing and feeding the good wolf. We've, it's weak. We've got to get it built back up. So I explain this to her and I also have to explain the fact that she's been starving this good wolf for months and potentially even all of the months in her pregnancy as well. And so I have to say the hard conversation um, of, a, of a long prognosis, right? It's always tough to tell someone that this is not going to be a quick fix. So I have to say, look, this wolf is weak. It, it has been starved for months. It is going to take a while for us to get him built back up. And the more we feed the good wolf, the good technique, the better that will become. But anytime you choose to go back to those that poor technique, to go back to those kipping pull-ups before you're ready, you're feeding that bad wolf, the one that led to pain waking you up at night, the one that led to you having to get off of the rig to begin with, the one that led you to me. So choose wisely who you're feeding because ultimately that's the one who wins. So again, for every rep you complete, that is food for one of two, not both, one of two wolves, good technique, or bad technique? So the question is, which will you choose? Let's go through a second scenario here with patient B. Patient B sees me all throughout her pregnancy. We modify her exercise so that she's 
always feeding that good technique wolf. Her exercises, at the, especially at the end of the last trimester, they look quite a bit different from the rest of her class in her CrossFit community. She's no longer doing snatches. She swapped to a no contact snatch and a snatch balance. But at this point, that bump is just too, uh, too far out in, in, in the late pregnancy for her to be able to do it with good technique. So she just stops with that. With burpees, she's doing a high plank, uh, walking out burpee so that she reduces the impact and um, so that she maintains that good core integrity throughout. And her, her pull-ups, late pregnancy, she was working on some lat work, some lat pull-downs to continue to strengthen her lats, some pow-off presses to continue strengthening her core. And again, she was consistently feeding that good technique wolf. And so her postpartum is looking like a graded progressive overload to return to building up the core and to build up her uh, tolerance to load or to impact and building back up her breathing mechanics as that was drastically changed from late pregnancy to early postpartum. So at this technique, I mean, at this point, her feedings were all towards the good technique wolf. She rarely, if ever, fed that bad wolf. So by always feeding that good one, her good wolf was was solid at the end of her pregnancy. And even though she was doing exercises very different from everyone else, she still got the right wolf strong and did not get the bad wolf any stronger. And so she just continues to feed and feed and feed that good technique wolf and her foundation gets stronger and she's able to return. And the thing I love, love, love about this scenario is we never have to spend that time period of starving the bad and building up the good. That good technique wolf never got really, really weak and feeble. It stayed strong all throughout. We were constantly feeding the right one. So with that, I will ask again, every rep you complete is food for one of two wolves, good or bad. Which one will you feed and which one will you teach your clients, your patients, your athletes to feed? I hope this uh, touches home to some of you all. I hope you can use this in your practice. And I would love to hear your thoughts on this. So comment below if you're listening in on the podcast. Um, shoot us a message. I would love to hear your thoughts on this. So again, um, I'm Alexis. I help, um, or I'm a, one of two lead faculty for Pregnancy and Postpartum Fitness Athlete course, and we would love to have you join us in our March cohort. So you can go on ptonice.com and find out more about our course. And with that, I am signing off. Have a happy Monday. Have a great one, great time in clinic. Hey, thanks for tuning in to the PT on Ice Daily Show. If you enjoyed this content, head on over to iTunes and leave us a review. And be sure to check us out on Facebook and Instagram at the Institute of Clinical Excellence. If you're interested in getting plugged into more ICE content on a weekly basis while earning CEUs from home, check out our virtual ICE online mentorship program at ptonice.com. While you're there, sign up for our Hump Day Hustling newsletter for a free email every Wednesday morning with our top five research articles and social media posts that we think are worth reading. Head over to ptonice.com and scroll to the bottom of the page to sign up.